This is a lesson on directed numbers. In this lesson, I'm going to attempt to explain where directed numbers uh, come from, how they're used, and do some addition and subtraction with directed numbers. Now, directed numbers tend to pop up in usually based on two different situations. So, Let's talk about the sorts of problems we've already done in maths uh, with operations. For example, if I start with 5 and from that I take away 3, well, that's easy, you know, it's just 2. Or if I do 5, take away 4, that's going to give me 1. And if I follow that pattern, 5, take away 5, gives me 0. Now, that all makes sense. The problem arises when we have 5 take away a number that's greater than 5. Now, until now, we've been told, well, that's not possible. But the reality is, in real-life situations, situations like this do come up. For example, if I have $5 in my bank account, but I need $6 from the bank, well, the bank will give me $6, but then now I owe the bank money. I no longer, I've gone beyond zero dollars in my bank account. I owe them an extra dollar. So how do we represent this? We represent this by negative one, or in this case, it would be negative one dollars. So we need some way of representing this situation where we're taking away a number greater than the number we started with. We need the mathematics for it. Now, it's not good enough to say, oh, it's just too hard, I'm going to ignore it, I'm not going to worry about it. Because this is uh, what we have to deal with in everyday life and we won't be able to get by if we don't learn how to work with these numbers. You can also see a pattern. We've gone from 2 to 1 when we took away 3, 1 to 0 when we took away 4, from 4 to 5, and then we went to negative 1. So we're taking away from 2 to 1, 1 to 0, 0, negative 1. So it sort of makes sense that the next thing would be 5 take away 7 gives me negative 2. So this is one situation where we use negative numbers. And we'll talk about this a little bit further and talk about how we can do these operations really, really easily. There's a couple of ways of thinking about it, and we'll go through both of them. But there is another situation where we come across negative numbers. And that's when a negative number represents something specific. So here we were talking about it in terms of just doing an operation. The other situation is, for example, the example we talked about, when you use a credit card, and what's the idea of using a credit card? The idea is that you spend money that you don't have. So the bank will lend you money, you don't have it, and you have to pay that money back. So that's an example of using a negative number. So if I owe the bank, say, if I have a credit card with a $1,000 limit, and I go and buy myself, I don't know, a I don't know, let's say an iPod. And if the iPod costs $500, I don't have $500. I use my credit card. So when I check my credit card balance, it will say negative 500. That means I owe the bank $500. Now, if I go after I get paid and transfer into my bank account $600 and I take so I'm starting with negative 500 because that's what I owe them. And I put $600 into that account, that credit account. I will have a positive $100 in that account. If I then go, so now I have positive 100. If I then go and buy something else, let's say diamond ring for $700, so my account has a hundred in it, I am going to take away seven hundred dollars out of that account. But I don't have seven hundred, I only have a hundred. So how much will I owe the bank? 
but I hope you can see that I will owe the bank 600 so I had a hundred I spent 700 what's the difference between 100 and 700 600 but it's not my 600 it's the bank 600 so that would be negative 600 another example of using negative numbers in real life is temperature now we're lucky in Australia it rarely gets below zero degrees unless you go to um, anywhere where it snows in winter for some skiing um, we, we don't come across temperatures below zero but we need a way of representing uh, temperatures below zero so any temperature above zero so for example today's top temperature is going to be 24 degrees that's brilliant it's nice and pleasant but somewhere in the world the temperature is way below zero degrees maybe that's not the best way of representing it Let's rub that out. Um, so that's 24. Here is 0 degrees on the thermometer. And somewhere in the world, the temperature is below 0 degrees. It might be 3 degrees below. And how do we represent that with a negative in front? So negative numbers are essential for us to get by. And we need to be able to work with them. The next clip will talk about how we work with negative numbers and how we apply our operations. So everything we've done with positive numbers, we need to be able to do with negative numbers. And it's not good enough to say it's too hard because that's what our life is about. That's how we get by. That's how we can get things done. So the next video will cover some operations with negative numbers.